Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here and in today's video we're going to be talking about extended warranties and whether or not you should look to purchasing them. But before we get into today's video, if you're looking for car buying advice, you want kind of like behind the scene looks to my main channel and then new cars that are coming out that I haven't reviewed yet, then this is going to be the channel to go to. So I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe. It's going to help get things up and going on this channel so then I can produce content on a regular basis for it. But with all that being said, let's just get straight into the video. Now, first off, before before we even get into whether or not you should buy an extended warranty, let's just talk about what an extended warranty is. So an extended warranty is an extra warranty on top of the warranty that a car already has that you purchased, or maybe the car has no warranty left and you're just getting warranty coverage. So that's really what I mean when I say extended warranty is this warranty does not come with the car. You have to purchase it on the side. So whether it is an extension of the warranty from the manufacturer, or it's a completely separate warranty, which I'll get into those in today's video. Um, but basically just know that this is something that doesn't come with a car. It's extra. And so now let's actually get into whether or not you should get one. But first off, let's kind of go over the different types of extended warranties. Now, the two main types of warranties that you'll see out there are warranty that are offered from a car manufacturer and then what I like to call aftermarket warranties and those are warranties that are not offered by the manufacturer and so what this might look like is maybe you go into a specific dealership and you see like a certified pre-owned vehicle and typically most certified pre-owned programs come straight from the manufacturer so that's the manufacturer offering extended warranty on a used vehicle versus maybe you see the dealership offering like a lifetime warranty that is just coming from that dealership again aftermarket warranty and so those are the two main distinctions is you have have the warranties again that are offered by the car manufacturer and you have the warranties that are offered by dealerships or other third-party companies basically warranty companies you see them all the time and let's kind of get into both of those types now now, first off with warranties that come straight from a car manufacturer, typically they're more expensive. This isn't the rule, but this is just typical for those warranties is they're more expensive than aftermarket warranties. Typically the coverage is better on the warranties and there's less loopholes for the manufacturer to get out of covering stuff under warranties. Again, this isn't necessarily the rule. This is just what typically happens. And the reason it's basically structured this way is car manufacturers want to have basically a guarantee for consumers to be able to get stuff covered under warranty so they can keep a good relationship with the people that purchase their product but obviously if they're going to guarantee this coverage and they're gonna make it very easy to get things covered under warranty they're gonna charge more for the warranty so they can basically cover their bases so that they don't go bankrupt off of warranty claims believe it or not is has happened in the past obviously there's other financial things that have been attacking certain car companies that bring them down but having expensive warranty claims can actually really basically financially bankrupt a car manufacturer it's absolutely crazy to think about but it's it's just a thing and so that's the reason why they're more expensive is just because they typically have much better coverage so you as a consumer you kind of have to do that debate in your head with whether or not you're going to go for an extended warranty from a manufacturer you're going to know you're going to have like the peace of mind that yes the coverage on this is going to be better and i'm probably not going to have crazy deductibles i'm probably not going to have crazy things that'll void the warranty but i'm going to have to pay a whole lot more out of pocket so you kind of have to determine if it makes sense based on the cost of the warranty now on the flip side aftermarket warranties are typically cheaper the coverage is typically not as good and typically there's more ways to void these warranties and the reason that things are like this is they're warranty companies they're in business to make money off of you buying a warranty it's pretty straightforward first off they don't want warranty claims right because every single time they have a warranty claim, that means that they are making less money. Obviously, they build their business model expecting warranty claims and all that, but they wanna to try to minimize that as much as possible. So what I have usually seen with these aftermarket warranties is they're easier to avoid and they just don't cover as many things. And they literally, it's, it's pretty much down to a science where they'll look at a car and they look at the things that are most likely not gonna break and they look at the things that are most likely going to break. And you know what they do? They cover the things that are most likely not going to break and they don't cover the things that are most likely going to break and that's just the name of the game that's just the business and so again as a consumer if you're looking at an aftermarket warranty you want to look at all of the coverage and same thing if you're looking at a warranty that's from a car manufacturer look at what it actually covers and look what it doesn't cover and then you're gonna to have to do that debate in your head okay well this is 
X amount of dollars less compared to this other warranty, but it doesn't cover this, 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 and this. And I know that this car has those things commonly break. So I actually would be saving money by going for the more expensive warranty, or maybe you figure the opposite way. So really that's kind of like the biggest difference that I've seen between the warranties from car manufacturers and between the aftermarket warranties. Now, aside from warranties that are from the manufacturer and aftermarket warranties, obviously there's different coverages on warranties. Typically what you'll see is you'll see like a quote unquote bumper to bumper warranty. And obviously what this typically does is it covers most things minus wear and tear items like tires and brakes, stuff that is just going to for sure fail over time because of use. And then what you'll see is like powertrain warranties and then another type of warranty you'll see is like lifetime warranties. So again, typically on the basic warranties, the bumper, and, and this applies for every warranty, but especially on these bumper to bumper warranties, make sure you read what the warranty actually covers and what it doesn't cover so that you can understand where you stand with the warranty. And you guys will notice that's a reoccurring theme throughout this video is you need to understand what is covered and what's not covered. And you also need to understand deductibles because a lot of warranties have deductibles just like an insurance claim. And that's another way where they can kind of protect themselves money wise is maybe having a little bit of a higher deductible. So you're paying less for the warranty, but you're not gonna be able to get anything covered under warranty unless you pay this large deductible. And so look at that as well in the fine print, all that stuff. Um, but especially on the basic warranties, make sure you look at everything that is covered and everything that's not covered. And on the powertrain warranties, the same thing. Now, typically what I see with most powertrain warranties is they will only cover stuff that oil touches. And if oil doesn't touch it, then they won't cover it. And so a lot of things with hybrid systems and especially like a lot of new cars have all that kind of stuff. And a lot of the electrical components that actually um, basically computer through computers control the powertrain, they won't necessarily control the, or um, basically cover those things. So the things that are more likely to break, again, are a lot of the things that they won't necessarily cover. So you need to really read into the coverage and not just assume, oh, well, if I get this powertrain warranty, then it's gonna cover the hybrid system and it, whatever your vehicle has, right? It's gonna cover all the stuff and that might not necessarily be true. So you need to really read into the coverage. And then with the lifetime warranties. So lifetime warranties are pretty interesting. And again, just understand that most warranty companies, well, I shouldn't say most, all warranty companies are in business to make money. They want that money up front and they're hoping that you're not gonna have a warranty claim. And what I most commonly see with these lifetime warranties is it's extremely easy to avoid the warranty. So what I've typically seen is you have to service your vehicle at a particular shop location, every single service period and within certain mileage increments. And if you don't do this regular servicing at this place, the warranty is voided. And then on top of that, a lot of these things will say, oh, well, if you take your car to this particular place, or if you do this particular activity with your car, then the warranty is voided. So there's all these like little things in the fine print to void these lifetime warranties. And again, they want that to happen because they don't want warranty claims because that means that they lose that money that they made up front off of you. And on top of that, typically what these warranties will do is the place that they have you service it will be the same place that's selling you the warranty so they can make the money off of the servicing. So it's kind of like a two in one deal for them. So just understand that, read the fine print on the lifetime warranty, understand you know, what voids that warranty, what the coverage actually is, and then you can decide for yourself if it's worth it or if it's not. Now that we actually know what warranties are and the different types of warranties, let's actually get into whether or not you should purchase a warranty. Now, first off, you need to decide if you're gonna buy a new car or a used car because this is gonna be very important. And spoiler alert, people that buy new cars actually should buy warranties most of the time and people that buy used cars, depending on the used car, also should buy warranties most of the time. But let's get into this section of the video. So first off, on the new car side of things, the reason why I say that most people that buy a new car should actually buy a warranty is because the average person in the US keeps their car for about six years, okay? The average basic warranty here that's offered is about three years, which that covers most things. It doesn't cover brakes and tires and all that stuff, but it covers most things in the car. So you'd have three years of car ownership for the average person where you're not gonna have any warranty. And then the average powertrain warranty is about five years long, which means that the average person would have one year where they wouldn't have that powertrain coverage. So the average person's gonna have, again, three years of basic warranty coverage that's not gonna be there and one year of powertrain warranty that is not gonna be covered. And really what you need to do then when you're purchasing a new car is you need to research into the car, but understand that nowadays everyone makes pretty good cars, but Nowadays also, most cars are extremely technical. There's just so much stuff going on with the engineering, with the electronics, even the most reliable car brands. Like Toyota is a really good example. Everyone looks at Toyota and they go, gosh, it's the most reliable car, nothing's gonna break. 
Well, Toyota uses all these electronics now, and I'm not saying that Toyota's electronics are unreliable, but what I'm saying is that's more stuff that has a chance of breaking. So what you need to do if you're looking at buying a new car is you need to really be realistic with yourself. How long am I actually gonna keep this new car for? And if you're gonna keep the new car for past the warranty point, you need to start looking into getting warranties. And what you need to do, like I said earlier in the video, is you need to look at the warranty that's offered from that manufacturer, and you need to also look at aftermarket warranties. You need to basically look at the price difference between the two, you need to look at the coverage differences, and then you can determine for yourself which route is the best to go. Should I spend a little, Again, usually uh, man, warranties offered by manufacturers are usually a little bit more money. So should I spend a little bit more money on a manufacturer warranty or should I save a little bit of money, go for the aftermarket warranty, but understand that it might not cover things. And this also goes into researching the vehicle that you're buying. Basically, most vehicles will have some sort of reliability thing on them, but more important, they'll have things that will go broken on, especially with forums with those vehicles. People that have owned them, that have used them, can post on, hey, this is what broke on mine, this is what broke on mine, all that kind of stuff. So go on these forums and see what's breaking on them, and then go to those warranties and say, does this warranty cover it, or does this warranty cover it? And after you do this whole cost-benefit analysis, then you're gonna determine, first off, if you're gonna get a warranty, which you you probably should because you're most likely going to keep the car past the warranty period and with how much stuff can go wrong in cars it's usually not worth not having a warranty in most cars not all cars but most cars and then you need to determine okay do i want the more expensive one that has better coverage or do i want to go for the less expensive one that has less coverage that's at least going to cover the things that are most likely going to break on my car now as for used vehicles it's a little bit of a different story so if it's a really old vehicle then it's probably not going to have any ability to have a warranty some places might offer a warranty on it but a lot of places they just won't they don't want to warranty an old vehicle because they go it's an old vehicle the parts are going to be worn the stuff is bound to break and again warranty companies are in business to make money off these warranties and if they warranty a bunch of old cars well they're probably gonna have a bunch of warranty claims and they're gonna lose money so it doesn't make sense for them and so if it's a really old car you probably won't be able to get a warranty but my biggest piece of advice with used cars is if you're purchasing a car that's relatively new and you can find a good enough deal at a dealership that sells that car brand new i think that certified pre-owned is the best route to go with a used car and just with a used car warranty because typically most certified pre-owned programs just extend the warranty that's already from the car manufacturer and so you have that really good coverage that's from that car manufacturer just being extended on this used car and so if you can find the right deal on a certified pre-owned i think that's always a really good route to go if you're going for a relatively new vehicle now most certified pre-owned programs they kind of have like like a year cap and so if a vehicle gets too old they just won't certify it just like other warranties because they just know they know stuff's gonna break that's just the reality of cars even if you really well maintain a car after time things just break because they're old but that's what you should look at with the used cars if there's a certified pre-owned program. If there's not a certified pre-owned program, my advice from the new cars transfers over to the used cars. How long are you gonna keep this car for? What are the things that break on the car? And with the warranties you're looking at, what does the warranty cover? What does it not cover? Does it cover the things that are commonly gonna break on the car or does it not? And then that'll kind of help you determine what you should get on a used car. And then also look at just general reliability track records because you know, if you go old enough, there's certain used cars that the parts are just cheap enough and the maintenance is so far spaced out that it doesn't make sense to buy a warranty on it. But again, those aren't necessarily the norm. That's just there's cars out there like that. So there might be a chance where on a used car you're buying it that it's just old enough that the parts are cheap, but it's just new enough that it's not like crazy unreliable like some of these old cars where they just will always have issues. And so if you're buying a car kind of in that range, which I noticed right now is kind of like the mid 2000s, there's certain cars from the mid 2000s that are just garbage, but I've noticed that there's a lot of cars in the mid 2000s that like they hadn't fully adopted like all the computers that we have nowadays in cars, but then everything had been finely tuned over the last 100 years of people producing cars that cars at that point were actually built really well really reliable so it's like you have all these cars that don't have all the crazy computers but then all the parts on them are actually really reliable so a lot of these cars you can actually maintain yourself to an extent and you don't wouldn't necessarily have to purchase a warranty on it so again research into all of that and if you can i think certified pre-owned is the route to go with the used car if you can find one depending on the certified pre-owned program just know that if you're buying a luxury car 
typically the certified pre-owned programs are really expensive and it might not necessarily be worth it just because of how expensive it is and with cars that are non-luxury the certified pre-owned programs are usually a little bit more reasonable so i'd say if it's a non-luxury car it's almost always a no-brainer if it's a luxury car it's definitely something you have to think about um, a really good example for me is i was looking at buying not like a new new porsche but like a newer ish porsche but used still and I was looking at, okay, well, I want to make sure that warranties are, you know, there's warranties on this. And the certified pre-owned warranties that I could find on the car were anywhere from $3,000 to $5,000. And that was just to get the inspection and then make sure it was COP, um, certified pre-owned and then to get like this first type of warranty on it and it wasn't even a warranty that lasted very long and it's like you had to keep spending this reoccurring theme another really good example is a channel i watch hoovy's garage he bought a mclaren mp412c which i know this is like way up there but the warranty that he bought for it was one year and it, I think it was like unlimited mileage, but it was from McLaren and it was $5,000 a year. So you'd have to buy that warranty every single year because you knew stuff was gonna break on that car basically. Um, but yeah, just research into the cost and everything on used cars and again, Certified pre owned is probably the route to go. I hope that helps you guys out if you're looking at purchasing a warranty for your car that you already own, or if you're looking at purchasing a car and getting a warranty for it. As always, I'd really appreciate if you guys would suggest future video topics so I can kind of tailor the videos I make to you guys that are the viewers. And if you're stopping for the first time again, I'd really appreciate if you'd subscribe. It's really going to help me get things up and going with this channel. But I'll see all of you in that next video.